And it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Mahila Pashan. She serves as president and chief executive officer of Acetone Group. She's an engineer in physics and chemistry, and then she was graduated with an MBA. She began her career in the pharmaceutical industry in large American companies, Merck, for 12 years and Pfizer for five years. On this period, she held increasing positions in marketing and sales, and as of the early 90s, was in charge of large business units with more than 50 million euros in sales. Then she moved to medium-sized European pharma companies, where she was in charge of the French affiliate, and then swiftly from the European commercial operations. Her last position in the pharma industry was to serve as executive vice president of Lundbeck with responsibility over worldwide commercial operations. In 2012, she decided to move to the med tech domain in order to make more impact on the health and lives of patients. Since this day, she has been involved in a significant number of companies, starting in GN Store Nord, one of the worldwide leaders in the hearing aid industry, and a couple of companies where she serves as independent director and now president and CEO of Aston Group. I, um, when I started Dental Town in 1998, I didn't want it to be Dentist Town. I wanted it to be Dental Town because the only reason we are so great dentists is from all the great companies that make us the products and technologies that we use. And I wanted, if all the dentists were saying, we wished your product was red and you were making it blue, well, you would need to know that more than anyone. So I always wanted the dental manufacturers to see what everyone was saying about their products so that you guys would know uh, what we needed. So thank you for coming on the show. By the way, I don't do any paid commercials. I asked you to be on my show. You did not ask me. I wanted to get you on the show. I've heard so many great things about you and your company. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's my pleasure and my honor. Thank you so much so for what, inviting me. So what are you passionate about today in the Acetone Group? Uh, we are passionate about uh, providing progress and providing innovations to the, to the, to the dentist. And uh, basically, we have two, uh, you probably know that Acteon is, uh, has two, two, two major technologies. One is about ultrasonics uh, for scaling, but also for making more surgery, um, mini uh, less invasive surgery. And the second is about imaging. And uh, we are a little bit new in the imaging, uh, in the imaging field, but now we, we think we have a whole line and we, we are ready to make a real impact in this imaging field. So tell us about your, um, your ultrasonic line and why, the, why that has you excited. Uh, our ultrasonic line, I, uh, be, being very, very clear with you, we have, um, I think we are ahead of, uh, of, the, of the show and we are ahead of the, uh, of the, of the league on this ultrasonics with uh, uh, many, many, many patents. And uh, we are providing, uh, um, how, do you, how would you say in English, we are providing devices which are more efficient, but more, more, more soft on the other side extremely efficient uh, but by far we have the products with for, for which for instance in in terms of piezo surgery which is our most important product in uh, in this in this field which are able to to really cut bones hard tissues without impacting at all the soft tissues this is a new way to make surgery this is a way to make less invasive less hurting a kind of atraumatic surgery and it's really important for the patients and also for the dentist. So which, uh, which dentist um, would be the best at showing this technology, like creating an online CE course on Dental Town or, uh, or a YouTube video? Or who, who's your favorite dentist using this uh, technology that likes to teach it? Uh, I will not give you names uh, because I, I, I don't want to be uh, to, 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 to be the promoter of uh, Mr. So and So, but but I will give you I will give you uh, very clearly the the specialties of the dentists who are extremely fond of our products. Uh, we, we think it's it's important. First and foremost, these are the dentists who are using uh, who, are, who are who are making a lot of implantology in their practice. Uh, they they are they need to 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 cut uh, bones. They 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 need to cut gingiva, and it's for them. It's it's a real help. 
it's a way to decrease the, the, the healing process in terms of duration by two. So meaning that uh, for the patients, it's totally uh, another experience. So first is, I would say, all the, the, uh, the, the dentists who are making implantology uh, on a regular basis. And second, I would say it's all the dentists who would think that, for instance, in, in, in case of extraction of, of a tooth, uh, of a tooth uh, they think that it's, uh, they want to make it atraumatic, easy for the patients, easy for, the, easy, easy for them, and uh, without hurting and without uh, risk of hematoma or, or whatsoever. So basically, I would say that probably 80% of the dentists may have a, a, a real use of this, of this new technology. So um, most to get into dental school, you had to take math, physics, chemistry, biology. Um, most dentists said that was the worst part about becoming a dentist is having to take physics and chemistry. And you were an engineer in physics and chemistry. What do you think made you like physics and chemistry? What made me like? Um, I would say first the idea of progress. Uh, in fact, I've always worked for, for the health industry. Uh, first for pharma industry and then, then for medtech. And for me, what is important? Nothing is as important as health and the progress. I think it's, I'm probably a little bit naive, but I think that we, we can really have an impact and make progress for the patients. And this is for me, uh, the, the good reason to wake up in the morning. So what did you, what have you found more fulfilling working for pharma that's making pills and medication or now working in dentistry? Is that, is it kind of the same thing or is it very different? No, it's it's really different. Uh, first, pharma industry has changed a lot on the last decades. Uh, I would say between the, what it was 20 years ago, I'm not so so young, so I can speak about 20 years ago. What it was 20 years ago and what it is now is probably very, very different. Um, I thought it was extremely re rewarding 20 years ago to, 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 to work in, in, in the domain of cardiology and then psychiatry because we brought to the market and we brought to the patients really innovative drugs, real breakthrough, breakthrough products. Uh, it was in a matter of uh, hypotension, uh, angina, uh, CHF, congestive heart failure, etc. And it was really, really rewarding and life-changing for the patients, even in schizophrenia, etc. So this, these times, I thought the pharmaceutical industry was really bringing to the market incredibly good drugs for a large population of patients. Now, I would say that the pharma industry today brings extremely, extremely important drugs, but for more rare disease, for more, a small, smaller number of patients. And uh, I think that's why uh, I thought it was a good move to go from the pharma industry to the medtech, because I thought that it was, it was important to bring to, the, to the, a larger group of patients. And to be very honest with you, I think dental is fantastic. Because in dental, you, you, you treat not only the usage of the, 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 the ability to, 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 to eat, the ability to speak without any problem, etc. You, you, you treat the aesthetic, which is so important. Uh, it's clear that a smile which is just impaired is terrible. Uh, it hurts the patient. It hurts the soul of the patient. It, it, were, it, uh, it hurts the patient really, really inside. And so it's it's the link of uh, I would say the usage of the of the of the mouse. It's a link between the disease and the opening on the uh, eventually on the organic disease because we know that there is many many links, for instance, between diabetes and and um, overall disease. And uh, and it's also about aesthetic. This is fantastic. This is this is I think where today. Many many progress can 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 really um, be brought to the to the general population. So, so I'm very happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you on the show. And by the way, the last time I spoke in Paris was last year, and I took uh, three of my four boys with me. And my gosh, they had so much fun. I wasn't going to go back to Paris without taking all all. I tried to get all four of my boys, but the oldest one's married with kids, so he couldn't go. Uh, but my gosh, we love Paris. That is, uh, I got to say the one difference between Paris and the United States, the Americans, uh, they call football, you know, they, they're 
they're throwing the football, and they think they're really good fans. But there are no more fa- bigger fans than soccer in Paris. We watch some soccer games at some bars at night. I've never seen people get that excited and crazy uh, during a sport event as uh, in France. Those are the most hardcore soccer fans. Um, so tell us about imaging. Um, what's got what? What do you what are, what are you passionate about about imaging? What did the market not already have that you decided to innovate in imaging? Uh, in imaging, we have, as you probably know, we have a comprehensive line of products, and uh, which goes from uh, cameras. Uh, we were uh, for some years ago in this in this uh, in this segment, and we are. Uh, by, by the way, we are already the number two in the market in the in the camera segment, and we have also uh, large extra oval uh, devices, 3D 3D devices, which have been launched in the last Chicago. So uh, we have today a comprehensive line. Uh, I, I would like to tell you about two 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 stories, two events, re- which really uh, are important for us. Um, I will take my notes because you know my English is not really good, so I will, I will, I will, I will have some help. Well, is that what, okay? What What do you call someone uh, who speaks two languages? Bilingual. What do you call someone who speaks one language? An American. <laughs> okay. And there's not. There's probably almost no one listening to you today that could give an interview on my show uh, in French, and I'm so. I, I'm, I'm astounded that you can uh, speak English as a second language. So everyone, okay. everyone listening to you is so blown away <laughs> that you can give a dental lecture in a different language. I don't know any dentist um, that can give a, a, a dental lecture in two different languages. So please use your notes, and you're doing fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So first is about the fight against periodontal disease. Uh, as you know, we have a camera. Uh, we have a camera uh, line with Soprocare, and um, with this camera, this is one of the only way to see and to evaluate the periodontal disease. So this has brought us to 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 start a very important operation in partnership with Henry Shine in the U.S. And we are extremely passionate about this operation. We are now targeting periodontal disease, as which is an hidden epidemi, ep, epidemic against, um, among ep- Americans. Basically, you have 64 million of, of Americans who are suffering of periodontal disease. Um, what is clear is that it is the leading cause of adult tooth loss, but even even if it's a very, very important co- cause of uh, hidden uh, tooth loss, the, this prevalence is absolutely uh, well known, but it's undertreated. And there is a very important link between this periodontal disease and also the risk, for instance, in terms of diabetes, the risk in terms of uh, cardiovascular disease, and even the risk of cancer. For instance, it increased the risk of cancer, of some cancer, for instance, the prostate cancer, et cetera, by 50%. So I think it's really uh, an important, important topic in terms of um, in in the U.S. And um, we now have created an operation by which we ask all dental health care professionals to detect, diagnose and treat periodontal disease at the earliest stage of possible. Why? Because with Soprocare, you have the unique possibility to show to the patient the reality of this disease on directly on his teeth. Uh, we have a special way to show with the, with the fluorescence, and this is the only product which does that, to show the, 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 the disease by itself. It will, it will help the, the dentist to show to the patients and obviously to treat this disease. So we have started this operation with Henry Shine three months ago. So far, it, uh, the, 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 the result and the, the takeoff is, of this operation is quite good. And we hope that this operation has a major impact in the U.S. on the, the next year. I think the most interesting thing about periodontal disease is that the uh, insurance companies in America... Uh, they have noticed that one of their most expensive uh, claims is a premature baby. And they are are, um, realizing the link between uh, 
gingivitis, gum disease, and they're realizing that if all their pregnant girls were covered, were getting their teeth cleaned, if it, every time it saved a premature delivery, it would save them over one million dollars U.S. So I think um, uh, they're they're I, I think that's what's uh, going to get the most focus on the oral systemic link. You have two major you have two major uh, I would say issues in terms of organic disease with uh, periodontal disease. You have one which is uh, as you say premature uh, birth, and the second is regarding diabetes and uh, cardio cardiovascular disease. With diabetes, you have a real risk of, uh, uh, I would say, not not treating the insulin inside the body, which uh, w- in case of the disease. And so, for both both on, on both uh, sides, it has a major impact on the on the global health of the patients. That's why we think that uh, if we can help, and if we can help the in terms of public health, this this important disease, we will uh, we will feel that we we have achieved something. So how does it feel? Uh, were you born and raised in, for, in Paris, France? Uh, not in Paris. In France, yes, but not in Paris. Um, my first city was Tours, which is uh, 200 uh, kilometers uh, south of Paris. So how does it feel to be born in the country of the first dentist ever, Pierre Fichard? Um, I think we feel that... Um, uh, we feel that the French people are really um, close. The French patient, the French uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, all the, the the people are very very emotionally linked to that dentist. I think this is very French. Um, I think you don't have this type of link with the in the other countries. But on the other side, many patients do not like to go to that dentist, as probably in all and every countries in the world. And so it's uh, it's. Okay, it's a sort of a internal fight. <laughs> I am. Um, um, have you have you seen the museum of Pierre Fichard in Paris? No, not yet. Oh, it's, yeah. it's part of my plan. You you have to go because I mean he really started the whole movement and uh and um, the uh, Pierre Fichard Academy is one of the biggest uh, groups in, in in the world. I mean they're all over the world. Um, and I also have to say one thing to my. Uh, uh, people around the world who haven't uh, listened to this, who haven't uh, gone to uh, uh, Paris, when you go to see the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa is actually the least exciting painting. In the, what is it called? The Louvre. Le Louvre. The I mean. Le Louvre. The Louvre. Yeah, yeah. That the Mona Lisa was the not even the highlight. The paintings in that place, the statues. We were mesmerized for two days i mean they had paintings i mean that were you know 10 meters by 10 meters i mean some of the, the most... mona lisa is a small painting uh, okay yeah but but it just the um the the amazing paintings in that place i mean i've never seen any museum in the world that had that mind-blowing of paintings and sculptures and i mean and I didn't know if my three boys would find it interesting, and they didn't even want to leave. I mean, we, we stayed there all day and went back the next day. And, I mean, just the detail of those paintings. And, I mean, just, just all kinds of genres of paintings. Gosh, that was fun. Um, Parisian so- people think that to, to visit properly the Louvre, you have to spend there seven days. I've never spent seven days in the Louvre, at least uh, not uh, not seven days in a row. But uh, normally, this is the normal time to really know about the Louvre. So it's and, and really well, huge. And it's kind of, a, a, I mean, it's a walk through history. I mean, you, you for thousands of years, I mean, there's paintings covering all different time spans. And and uh, it, it was just incredibly interesting. I, I can't wait to go back and do it again someday. Um, so... I want to go back to digital imaging. Um, You still, you also have phosphor plates. Of course. What would you say to a young dentist who's going to start their own practice and they could do imaging with phosphor plates or they could do it with uh, sensors? What, what, Mm -hmm. what, What should they be thinking about in deciding to go with sensors or phosphor plates? 
<laughs> ah, this is a difficult question because I think it's a little bit a matter of religion. You know, it's like asking a Catholic what, what he thinks about. <laughs> I think that uh, both both uh, technologies have uh, drawbacks and advantage. Um, and I would not I would not say one is better than the other. Uh, what is clear is that with the progress which have been made in both technologies, we are we can really provide the dentist with products which which can help him a lot in his in his in his dental practice but i would not i would not um, uh, plea for plea for for one versus the other uh, obviously it's uh, the, the quality of the image with the new phosphor plate is just incredible we have a product which name is psx probably you have heard about that which really really brings a lot of progress with the possibility to have this product very much on the side of the dentist so really close to the to the practice very easy to handle very uh, very easy to to put in the the mouth of the patients because obviously with sensors uh, it's rather big and it can hurt the patient and clearly the children moreover but uh, but uh, but i would say that both both technology are really good and we cannot uh, we cannot say one is better than the other well, it definitely seems a lot of my friends who are pediatric dentists who only work on children like phosphor plates better because they're smaller. Of course. Yeah, and, for children, it's obvious. Yeah, for children, it's obvious. And a lot of endodontists who are just taking a picture of one tooth, a lot of those uh, endodontists prefer this. Mm -hmm. But which one in the long run do you think is uh, costs more money? Because w uh, when a sensor goes out i mean that that's very expensive so for the long run uh over the life of a, a practice say on a 10-year run what do you think is um lower cost we have measured that and uh, if we take only very premium quality products uh, because obviously if you take a very low quality product the, the computation is different if you take real premium quality product on the long run uh, uh, scanners so PSPX, for instance, is by far cheaper than than Sensor, by far in the real life. And by by far, what do you mean? Do you mean twenty percent less, thirty percent less? Between twenty five and thirty. Between twenty five and thirty percent less. Yeah. I, I want to go back to uh, what you were saying. You know, it comes down to religion. You know, people. Uh, um, <laughs> it seems like different parts of the world. Some yeah. use air driven hand pieces. And then you'll go to other countries where everyone's electric. What, what, what do you, what do you, why do you think some countries um, all use air driven turbines and some countries use electric motors? And what do you, and again, what do you think uh, is higher quality, lasts longer, lower cost? I can, uh, this is an easy, I think for me, it's a, it's a more, easy, it's an easier topic. If we, we if we speak, for instance, about uh, uh, piezo piezo uh, ultrasonics versus uh, versus, for instance, Cavitron, uh, for for me, I think in terms of technology, in terms of benefits for the patients, benefit for the dentist, the way to handle it, uh, the piezo the piezo scaler are much better. If you ask me, uh, this has been proven. This is we have a lot of publications, uh, clinical clinical publications, clinical experts, but also I would say engineers review. So uh, on this one, I think it's not matter of religion; it's really a matter of facts. Uh, it's up to me, very different from what what we spoke we spoke about regarding a sensor and scanner. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I I, th I think the uh, the other advantage of the electric motor is the uh, air driven has a high whine that everybody knows that sound and doesn't like that sound. It's kind of like when you fly on an Airbus made in France or a Boeing made in um, uh, Seattle. They they have different sounds, and I think the electric sound is more soothing to the patient uh, than the uh, air driv driven sound. So, uh, but what is clear? What is clear? And, and this is for me. Uh, I'm pretty new with the with this world, and uh, it's it's extremely strange for me. Very, uh, I would say, awkward to see that the practice between the U.S. and Europe are so different. Uh, I would not have uh, imagined such a difference. 
And uh, you have this difference in terms of uh, uh, ultrasonics. You have a difference between in terms of motors. You have a difference in terms of uh, scalar uh, sensor versus scanners, etc. So this is this is really uh, this is really strange to me. Well, the biggest difference is uh, football. You guys don't <laughs> use your hands. So the American the Americans want to know why you don't use your hands in football. Um, but, uh, you know, you know what I, uh, wish every company would do. So dental town, we started in 1998. We got a quarter million dentists from every single country on earth. And then we came out with an app, but anyway, I have this search bar, um, and you can search for a name. And if you put in your company's name, Acteon, there's just, I mean, there's just pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of threads and they love it when the president or CEO goes on there and, uh, you know, acknowledges what they're saying or comment on there, because like I say, it is dental town. And some people in dental manufacturing circles think that it's just for dentists and it's not. And I think that um, this is the free, um, I mean, to have your customers all on a forum telling you what they like, what they wish you did or whatever is just priceless and it's free. And, and I think it would give, uh, I, I think they would absolutely love it if you went on there. And, and, and if you feel shy, you can say that Howard told you to do it. Uh, but um, but some, I, I think every dental company should be monitoring what all the dentists around the world, and that is true what you say. Dentistry is very different around the world. And when you're in, uh, when I'm speaking in Cambodia and Malaysia, and it's so different than... Uh, um, even within the United States, there's big di differences between Manhattan and a small rural town in Ohio. Um, what, what do you think are other major differences between dentistry around, as practice around the world? Mm. I would say a big difference is uh, the fact that in many, many countries, the dentists are still alone, um, single, single office dentists. While, uh, for instance, in the U.S., you have now a lot of DSOs and a lot of clinics. And uh, I think it changed a lot the way to practice dentistry. Uh, for instance, the usage of imaging is much wider, much more regular uh, for these clinics than uh, when the dentists are alone. This is, this is one big difference. And uh, the, other, the other big difference is very much uh, uh, about imaging. Uh, in some countries, the... the uh, the dentists are, do not have the recourse to 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 have a, to do a 3D of a, of a, of a, of a, of a patient, and this changed totally the way you do implantology, for instance. This changed totally the way you 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 see the mouth of your patient and the way you you want to carry on a real treatment of the mouth, and not only one teeth. And this, I think, is a very much a big difference. Uh, in, in a way, in some countries, they go one by one, and in some countries, they, they really take care about the whole mouse and try to, to, to understand what they can bring uh, to the patient on the, globally. Well, you know, if you look at American uh, healthcare, the physician, so there's about 211,000 dentists, but there's a million MDs. What drove group practice and made them consolidate was buying more expensive equipment. Like you can't buy an MRI and have one doctor use it. And as MRIs and CAT scans and ultrasonics, and you're seeing that in dentistry when you look at CBCTs and CAD cam and all this high tech, plus the, the patient wants uh, wider available hours. But I would say that what consolidated physicians was two things. Um, you need a group practice to buy the machinery, the technology. And the other was um, insurance. And I think one of the biggest differences I've seen, I've lectured in 50 countries, is how um, if, if there's an insurance scheme, it really affects how dentistry is delivered. Like you go to some countries where there's no dental insurance, like Brazil, mm -hmm. India, China. It's a very, very different market because the dentist just does what they want, charges what they want. But then when you go to um, Tokyo, Paris, London, where the reimbursement for a molar root canal is only a hundred dollars US, um, it makes people look more towards implants and Invisalign 
uh, if you're if you're in a government scheme somewhere in uh, um, Asia and your reimbursement for these 10 procedures, you, you can't even break even and you'll do them at a loss, then the dentists start looking at other procedures like Invisalign, placing implants. And, and I, I think one of the big explosions in implantology and Invisalign is that there's no um, government or dental insurance company setting your fee for you. Because a lot of those fees are set below your cost. So a lot of times if you want to do the right thing, you have to lose money in order to do it, like a root canal in Tokyo. There's never been a dentist in Tokyo who didn't lose money on a molar root canal, but then it makes a lot of people not want to do a molar root canal. It makes a lot of people say, well, I'd just rather extract a tooth and place an implant because I'll charge 1500 for that. One of the most interesting things uh, that, that's blown my mind, I'm 54 years old, and to have lived half a century watching people buy their $800 iPhone with their own money, their cars, their vacations, Disneyland, their house, putting in a swimming pool. But then when they walk into a dental office, they feel like uh, they're a victim and that somebody else should be paying for this, my boss. And I, I still can't figure out why someone at work thinks their boss should pay for their root canal when you, you're the one who didn't brush and floss every morning and every night. You're the one who drinks uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi instead of bottled water. And it's just kind of, I, I, I understand insurance when you come down with cancer or a heart attack or disease and, and it's a catastrophic claim. That's where insurance is. Your house burns down. You get in a car wreck. You get cancer. I get that. But for dentistry, for dentistry, it's like, okay, you eat chocolate eclairs for breakfast and you don't brush and floss your teeth, and you do this every day for years, and now you need a root canal, and it doesn't even dawn on you that maybe you should be paying for this yourself. In fact, the Chinese have the hardest time in the world um, when, you start when they start looking at dental insurance in America. I mean, they just look at you straight in the face, say, why would you're subsidizing bad behavior? You know, if they were if they quit eating so much sugar, if they brush and floss in the morning, they brush, so they do everything wrong, and then you subsidize them to get all this dental. So, so it's very, very interesting how the human mind works. Why do you think humans uh, expect someone else to pay for their dentistry, but not their iPhone? Hmm. I'm not sure that it's the, it's the same, the same, the same behavior everywhere and the same the same thinking everywhere in the world. I feel that in the Western world, more and more patients are ready to pay. Um, I think basically the people have in their mind, at least, for instance, in France, I, at least, for instance, in the UK or in Germany, that else is free. This is uh, post Second World War, uh, one of the uh, achievements of the, the the democracy in Europe. I don't speak about the US, of course. Uh, achievement of the democracy was, okay, you are covered for your health. And now it's free. And probably they think, okay, my health is, uh, has to be free. And so, of course, my dentistry has to be free. But uh, I can tell you in Europe now, it's very clear that in most of the countries, um, dental cares are extremely expensive and extremely low, with extremely low reimbursement. Um, to to to, uh, to to go back to what you were saying regarding the conservative treatments, which were not as reim well as reimbursed as the, as the, the for instance the implants etc. or the implants which are not reimbursed. But what is clear is now in France you have a strike. Now 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 this week you have a strike of, of the dentist, and the dentist are saying, yeah yeah yes, yeah, I'm serious, I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> is there, can you email me any news coverage or of any? Of course, of course. Yeah, oh, in French. Uh, in French, but I can translate that for you. I had, I had no idea the dentists are in French yeah, yeah, in yeah, France yeah. were on strike this week. Yeah, this week, this week, yesterday. It was yesterday. The the it was a, a, a how would you say that exhibit uh, demonstration in the street of dentists in uh, ten cities in France against oh, the my against. Gosh. This is breaking news. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard. I haven't heard any of this. 
Et no, puis... I'm not sure it's breaking news, but it's uh, but it's a real news. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what what are they claiming against, or what what, what are they what what are they they, they, they willing to have? They, they want to change the way to be reimbursed, the the, the 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 cares to be reimbursed, and they want that, for instance, all the conservative care are better reimbursed, and they are they because they think that it's much better to 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 ensure a real uh, uh, a real treatment and uh, with the with the, the teeth of the patients than to change everything, etc. So it's um, it's uh, I think it's uh, very much. Uh, uh, Current news in in Europe. I, I will send you. Uh, I will send you the documents. Do you, Tomorrow do you, morning, you have that in your mailbox. Oh, thank you. Um, so, in the United States, if the dentist went on strike, <laughs> um, we would be arrested. We're we're not allowed to. Um, it would be. Um, it, it's actually against the law. Um, the the insurance companies can all talk to each other and set their fees. But if the dentists um, get together and set their fees, it's collusion and it's go to jail. And where I'm in um, the state of Arizona, 30 years ago, when I just got out of school, three dentists in a small town in Arizona um, didn't like the fee. And they all met at one of the doctor's offices and they sent the insurance company a letter. And they said they had to raise the reimbursement to a certain fee. And those three idiots all signed it. And the insurance company got the letter, took it to the attorney general, and those boys all went to court, and they all lost, and they all went to jail. And uh, so, uh, so what they're doing in France, uh, <laughs> Americans, uh, American, I'm sure they would love to. I'm surprised they're not doing it in the UK. It seems like the French reimbursement is so much better than Tokyo and London. No, I don't think so. No, no, I, I'm serious. I don't think so. Right. London, uh, Tokyo, I don't know it by heart, but London, I I, pre I know it pretty well. Uh, the the reimbursement system is works much better in 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 the UK than in France. In France, the 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 the, re the level of reimbursement is extremely low, extremely low. Yeah. And in France, the the topic in France, the topic is. Um, I am a French person. I am. I'm not, not me, but I'm a French person. I have to have my dentistry absolutely free, free of charge. And uh, and the, I, I think the population is saying that also to the to the dentist. And uh, and that's why the dentists after that are claiming for having more more um, better reimbursement. Um, and by I, the way, uh, we have a new president, as you know, probably Mr. Macron. And Mr. Macron, during his campaign, has claimed a lot the fact that he wants uh, dentistry to be much better reimbursed. I did not know that. Um, help me out also on uh, a difference in culture. I noticed French people, um, they capitalize all the letters of their last name. Like when they send in, yeah. you know, uh, Americans mm -hmm. capitalize the first letter. It seems like French people capitalize is that is that what you do the entire yeah, last name is in all caps absolutely absolutely always yes always okay. and, and and when someone sends you an email and they only capitalize the first letter of your last name is that kind of insulting no 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 not at all no no it just, no but it's just a way to 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 write the the, the names to recognize the names is very easy because it's all in cap in caps letter I'll tell you. I'll tell you one of the main differences between uh, Europe and America. I mean, in all honesty, almost all Americans can only name one or two presidents of another country. Uh, almost <laughs> none of them speak a side because we're on the other side of the world. I mean, there's only one billion people in the Western Hemisphere. I mean, you live on the the the, the real side where six and a half billion people live. So America has an ocean on each side of it. It's got Canada to the north, and when you cross into Canada, you don't even know you're in Canada. And um, um, when you go to, when you talk to any dentist in Europe, they can name 50 presidents of 50 countries. They know world history. I mean, it is a, I mean, there's no comparison to the uh, historical and political understanding of the globe. Um, of a French dentist. Because we are small. Because we are small and we know that we are small. And we know that our country was very much invaded 
in the during the centuries and we we have to know by whom uh, it was invaded and so it's it's pretty important that we we understand the, the links between for instance the germans and the french or the the the, the brits and the french so we it's part of our history even though for a french person like me um, i feel extremely much more european uh, than than french be very clear i don't feel french i feel european uh, and when I'm in the U.S., I was in the U.S. last week, all week, and I, I'm very, very often in the U.S., I feel extremely well. But uh, but clearly, uh, yeah, we, 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 are, we, we know that we are small. We know that uh, it's extremely important what that I feel for me that it's extremely important that Europe goes well, uh, because I think it's, uh, it's a way to, 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 be, uh, to be stronger. And another uh, very exciting thing for us, so... I live in Phoenix, which before, when, but, you know, until they discovered the air conditioner, almost nobody lived here. I mean, it was basically Indian reservations. Um, so in, um, in Phoenix, a very old building is 50 years old. And then you go to Europe and you just routinely see things hundreds of years old, 500 years old, 1,000 years old. It's, it's just, uh, I just love Europe. I mean, almost every vacation I take, is in Europe and uh, can't get enough of it. So, so um, last question. I can't believe you give me so much time. Um, what, what, what do you see in the future? Where is Action going to be five, ten, twenty, thirty years? What, what's got you excited about the future? Uh, the, you know, as I told you, we have two technologies, and we want to to bring progress on these two technologies. Uh, I think twenty years from now, after that, I have no clue. Uh, 20 years from now, we, we will still be uh, probably uh, the number one or the number two in terms of ultrasonics, but with much more, which was with much more, uh, I would say, um, uh, way to use ultrasonics in the dentistry. I think it. Uh, we we are working on many many R and D projects on this, and so we will bring to the market uh, new new ways to use ultrasonics because ultrasonics is a, a real. Um, way to, 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 to make surgery, to change to very, very atraumatic, very smooth, very efficient and very, very thin. So um, I think uh, rotor, everything which is rotative will, will be a low, lower usage and ultrasonics will be a higher usage. I think um, this, this will still be very much uh, for us a core technology and a core, core, core clinical uh, implications. And the second is that we 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 want uh, this is a, this is a, a, a challenge, but uh, we are extremely confident about the fact that we will be one of the top three or top four uh, companies in the in the imaging uh, in the imaging field. Um, as you know, we have um, we have created in Acteon this imaging um, line uh, basically ten years ago, so we are very new. Uh, we are very new, but we are coming to the market with. Uh, uh, I would say uh, extremely new technology because we are not uh, with the old imaging technology. Everything is in cloud. Everything is, you know, it's the new way to, to think about imaging. Everything is, is digital, etc. So we are born with the dig digitalization on this on this imaging, and uh, I think that we have a R and D team which is really really unique. And uh, that this team will bring us to the top four, top uh, top five in this imaging uh, big world. Um, we are extremely happy with what is happening in the in the United States with our imaging line. Uh, the launch of Trium, which is our new product, is uh, so far extremely extremely good in terms of takeoff. And so uh, we are we are positive about the future. Yes. I want to I want to end with one other major major difference between the United States dental market and Europe. Um, when in the United States the dental meetings are fragmented. There's one in every state every year. So there's like 50 annual meetings every year. Whereas Europe has this monster meeting every other year in Cologne, Germany. It's mm -hmm. called the International and they get over 100,000 dentists from every single country on earth. But the difference at those meetings is the dentists in Europe, when they go uh, want to talk about a product, they want to talk to the owner of the company. They want to talk to the CEO. They want to talk to the engineers. Americans, they want to go to a dental lecture and listen to a dentist who doesn't know 90% of what's going on in that company 
and they're 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 middlemen. They're they're these middlemen. They distort the the picture. But for some reason, the dentist um, in America uh, don't want to go right to the CEO. And when I started Dental Town, I used to do for years. Uh, when when I was a little kid, I had five sisters, and um, all of the vacations were my my dad. Every vacation was the same. We would go to an amusement park like Six Flags over Dallas or Kansas City or Disneyland. We'd go to the amusement park, but on the way to the amusement park, we would stop by companies that gave tours like Budweiser, showing you how they make the beer, Coors, how to make the beer, uh, uh, General Motors, and we got in a golf cart and followed a car from start. My dad loved to see these factories, and I kind of learned that from my dad, and whenever I was lecturing, around uh, the world, I would always stop at the dental companies that were in that area. And I used to do a profile of them on the cover of the magazine, you know, once a month profile a company. And a lot of, and the American dentists always complained and said, well, that that's commercialism or they're, they're trying to sell something. I'm like, dude, are you, are, what are you, a free dentist? Do you, do you give free dentistry? <laughs> How come you can sell a root canal and a crown, but the company that's T selling you the technology to do yeah, a root canal. Well, why, why is that? It's just such a weird, bizarre culture. So we finally stopped doing the, the cover profile of dental companies. And uh, so now we're putting dentists on the cover. We've been doing that for the last four or five years. We, we've had that magazine since 1994. Um, but so now on my podcast, um, I want to bring back my passion for actually going to the manufacturers, going to the CEOs. And I just want to tell you, seriously, it was just a huge honor that you would come on my show today. I asked you to come on my show. And so that now, uh, when anybody thinks of Acteon, they're going to think of Marie, Marie, <laughs> La, Marie, Mayhila Pochon. Mayhila <laughs> Pochon. Did I say it right? Absolutely right. Thank and you I, so and much. And I really hope that you go on Dental Town. Put your beautiful face as your avatar and just drop in each one of those threads and say, you know, uh, thank you for your feedback or, uh, or, or whatever. Because I think I that what is best for the patient is if the entire value chain works together, whether it be the insurance companies from government or free enterprise, the dental manufacturers, the dentists, the assistants, the hygienists. It, we all have to work together so that the patient gets better, faster, higher quality, lower cost dentistry. And you are a very significant part of that value chain. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for your invitation. It was really a pleasure. I hope my, my English was enough. Your English was better than everyone's French uh, that listened <laughs> to you today. And I don't know one homie that can speak English and French. So thanks, oh, except for Montreal, of course. We, we could have done this uh, in French for all the uh, dental townies in uh, Montreal, Quebec. But thanks again for coming. I can't wait to, uh, if I remember in France, I, I'd love to uh, have a chocolate when eclair. When you come in France, please uh, say hello. And uh, it will be a pleasure to have a dinner with you. No, I'm not going to go to dinner with you. I'm going to make you go to the Pierre Fichard Museum. I'm going uh, okay. to take we'll you We'll go together. Okay, we'll go, we'll together. go together. All right. Have a great day.